So you've got your boat. You know you want to fly your flags. Can you know how to do it the right way? Hi, I'm Nika Waters, and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. I'm talking about flag etiquette. What flags you fly from what part of your boat. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Lunatech, makers of the hydration spray bottle, odor-free dishcloth, and a self-cleaning washcloth. Lunatech offers practical gear designed to save water and reduce waste. A water bottle that doubles as a garden hose? A dishcloth that doesn't get stinky? Yes, please. Visit lunatechgear.com to learn more. Use code BOATGALLEY to save 10% on everything. Lunatech, innovative gear for your outdoor adventures. Outdoor adventures, that definitely applies to going cruising on your boat whether you're in your home country or outside of your home country. But if you're outside of your home country, there are specific ways that you need to fly your flags to be compliant and be respectful. So what do you do? How do you know where where you're supposed to fly the flags? Flags are definitely a huge part of maritime tradition. And you might as well fly them correctly. The backstay, the transom area, the back part of your boat, And this is really reserved for the country flag where your boat is registered. Ideally, the flag is sized appropriately. It's supposed to be about an inch of flag for every foot of boat length is a good general rule. And it's supposed to be in good condition. Boat life is very hard on flags. And you might need to replace your country flag every year or so of full-time cruising. Between the wind and the sun and the rest of it, it's pretty hard on those flags might be a good idea to carry a spare. The starboard spreader, the starboard side of the boat. This is reserved for the courtesy flag, which is a small version of the country's flag that you're visiting. So you're on the starboard side of the boat, you're flying a small flag of the country that you are visiting, that you are in. You want to check some countries have different versions for maritime flags than they do of their main flag, but If you are flying the country flag on the starboard side, you're generally in pretty good shape. You fly that courtesy flag once you have cleared in. There shouldn't be any other flag flown on the starboard side unless the only thing that's on the starboard side is that yellow flag to indicate that you haven't cleared in yet. And a special note actually about that yellow flag. The yellow flag is to be flown by itself on the starboard side. It's not to be flown underneath the country flag or the country flag underneath it. The yellow flag flies by itself. And once you're properly cleared in, you pull the yellow flag down and put up the courtesy flag of the country where you're in. The port spreader, the port side of the boat, is reserved for other flags. Maybe you want to fly the country flags of the nationality of your crew. We've seen, you know, three or four different country flags on the port side, and that tells you that's the nationality, the people who are aboard. People like to fly their yacht club flag or the flags of different clubs that they belong to or organizations. Those go on the port side. We keep our flags in a big Ziploc bag in the navigation locker, roughly organized by the order of the countries we expect to visit. A little easier in the Caribbean because we're kind of going down the island chain, so we have some ideas to what order they're going in. It's helpful, we find it helpful, to label the flag on the stitch side with the name of the country because I don't know all the flags off the top of my head, and it's a whole lot easier to make sure that I've got the right flag when I can just double-check that, yes, that's the country that it's supposed to be on. The other thing you might want to do on label it is to make sure that you indicate which side up is the right way if you have a flag that that isn't apparent and you definitely definitely don't want to fly the flag upside down of the country that you're visiting don't do that so when you're labeling it also indicate which side is up even though looking through the anchorage where you are it should make it pretty easy to tell what flag it's supposed to be but I like to have it ready to go so that when we get back from customs, take down the Q flag, the new flag is ready to be to to be hauled up and, and flown. However you organize your flags, flying them correctly is a very easy way 
to signal respect and knowledge. And there are some customs officials who get a little picky about it. If they see your flag and you're not flying the right flags in the right way, that can not go over well for you when you're talking to the customs people. So fly your flags properly. It's not that hard to do. And it's a good reminder of how to do it. So the transom area is reserved for your own home country flag. The starboard side of the boat is for the courtesy flag or the Q flag, one or the other, not for both of them at the same time. And the port spreader is reserved for other flags. There you go. Flag etiquette. And won't it be cool when we're sharing an anchorage, flying our flags properly, and we can toast to each other and to the good fortune that we have having this incredible lifestyle that we do. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We love hearing from our listeners. We love it when you share us with your friends. We love it when you don't forget to subscribe. Remember, the Boat Galley is all about making boat life better. We hope it's making your boat life a little bit better too. Have a great week.